Well, joining me is H.M. Sol. Now, I, I, in the past, I've put underneath, uh, I was known as uh, Ian. Like yes, Ian James Clanton, King of Marie but, 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 but it's all changing. You are officially coming or going through the process of becoming H.M. Sol. Yes, yes. So I'll be, yeah. So I, I think it's an important process. The majority of the people on the island already know me as H.M. Yeah. And uh, from the very beginning, I've not hidden from the concept of what I believe the Isle of Man should be doing within terms of its place within the world and its future with regards to future of innovation, the planet, and Mauricia is all about that. So on the other interviews, we, we speak We've about covered Mauricia. that. Now, people yeah. might go, okay, where are we going? <laughs> but, I mean, this is going out on the 2nd of August. Uh, yes. And you've timed this interview, um, especially for this big announcement. I, I think we'll start with that. We've come to the 2nd of August, the 2nd. Of course. You're standing yes. uh, for a member of the Legislative Council Absolutely. in 2020. 20. That's February 2020. Yeah, February 2020. So about six months from now, basically. Yes, that's correct. Should, should we deal with that one? I know it Let's adds go. on to that, and you can come to that. But sure. I think you, you tr were going to go. Uh, last time around, because we were about to do an interview with you, then you pulled out. Uh, yes. Should we deal with this whole thing? Because it's such an you know, interesting subject. Of course. What happened, what's going to happen, and so on. So the situation before was the fact that I, I asked to uh, be nominated uh, as a member of the Legislative Council back in 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was for that uh, April 2018 election. And the person that was supposed to essentially be the nominator uh, and promised to nominate uh, actually withdrew the nomination at the last minute. So it became a situation where I believe that they felt that the Keys had already decided on a set number of candidates that they really wanted to see through. And um, the Legislative Council is not elected by the people. It's elected by the 24 sitting MHKs with inside of the House of Keys. And uh, they are using that process by which to elect the upper chamber mm -hmm. of our government. And I believe that that's one of the key challenges and situations with LegCo now is the fact that a lot of people truly don't understand what the role is and what it's supposed to be doing with inside of Tinwald. You've got to get the support just of yes. members, right, of, of Tinwald. Of course. You couldn't get even someone to propose you, so clearly that was off. What's yes. changed now what that you think you can make mm -hmm. it? And have you got the people in place? Well, the change now is the fact that I'm in the process now of contacting all of the 24 MHKs with regards to the MLC election. And I would very much love to inquire and to uh, press upon the public to get involved in the election. I know that the public doesn't necessarily have the right to vote for the MHKs, but one thing that they do have the power of doing is placing pressure onto their you know, elected MHK, their members within the House of Keys, to empower and encourage them to start looking at uh, certain candidates and the candidates they believe should be sitting there. I mean, don't underestimate the power of the people. Sure. You know, the people still have a controlling stake and if any member that is currently sitting within the House of Keys would like to be elected again in 2021, then I definitely say listen to the people. Well, how can, I, how can I put this? Diversity, and I just, that covers so many things, <laughs> is the name of the game, you know. Yes. And I don't want to put a label on you of course. and that sort of thing, but people will. Of course. But, and you hit diversity Yes. Do you think because, like last time, there's a lot of women went in, for instance, because they were underrepresented. You think this is your time mm. to get the votes? What well, one hundred percent? I don't believe that you know we can sit back on our laurels or you know rest on our laurels with this uh, specific challenge that's happening right now in the world. Uh, when I went through the process the first time, many people believed that they had uh, officially. Uh, met this equality or diversity quota simply by electing women. Uh, but at this current moment within the House of Keys, there's not a person that isn't British born. Uh, there's not a person that is from the international community. There's not a person of, you know, of color, in, in my instance, uh, not a person under the age of 30. Mm. So I think that what we're dealing with here is a massive challenge with regards to the national identity of but, the Isle of Man. But you're the king, as you keep yes. calling yourself. Surely there's going to be warnings going up in all sorts of directions that of this guy's not quite with us, you know, and I've, I've mm. interviewed you many times. You, you do seem to have this <laughs> thing about taking people with you. Yes. But at the same time, you know there's going to be opposition to you because you're mm. not uh, normal. And that's yes. the most ridiculous <laughs> thing to say. But you don't just fit this common sort of criteria. Well, I don't believe anyone does. And I believe that we are entering into an era right now on our planet where people are having to step up boldly and decide, well, just because I may be a bit eccentric or different or visionary, does that necessarily mean that I have to back away from the vision that I want are to accomplish? Eccentric? Do you see yourself as eccentric or do well, you see yourself as normal? I, again, yeah. that awful word. But I mean, 
you know, how, how I simply see myself as a person that wants to see very good things happen in the world. And I know that I'm a catalyst with other people in order to encourage and empower uh, you know, the platforms that I'm on and the audiences that I'm a part of to begin to think holistically about our planet, about the world, and about the challenges that are currently taking place. Why are you going for the MLC route, which yes. is through such a, a small club of you know, members, of course. rather than put yourself to the public for voting? And there's more to this story, which I'm, we're going to come to. <laughs> It might be a two-parter, two but let's, let's deal with that one. Why, yeah. why the MLC are not on MHK? Well, the MLC process occurs every two years versus the general election for MHKs, which happens every five years. So the ability to be a part of the sitting tin world at this very moment, I believe, is imperative. And I believe that having a voice of a person that is part of the LGBT community, having a person that is under the age of 30, having an individual that is from uh, another country, i.e. American, you know, to sit inside of a chamber that it's supposed to be the oldest continuous parliament in the world there to help inform the uh, the policy structure of the island is very important with all the challenges yeah. happening glo globally at the moment. But as, as it stands you can't have a position in, of power as an mm. MLC. You, you're there to do the, well, the, you know, the paperwork and to... to well there's no law that states it. There is not a single law that says that you as an MLC cannot be a, a government minister. I know that it's been the tradition where people have decided to only go for the keys uh, with respect to you know, having a person as a government minister, but it is theoretically possible to have a person that is a part of the Legislative Council to serve as a minister for the mm -hmm. government. Now, you need a proposer and you need a backer and yes. you need some, how many do you need in total? You so, so just, to, just to get your name on the... To, to your, your name on the list is about four people. Yeah. So what you have is you know, uh, a nominator, a seconder, and two supporters. Yes. And that's the process that, that you go through. And so my, my thing is that I want to actually appeal now and call out to you know, our supporters from the public to put pressure on their MHKs to meet with me. When I went through the process the first time, very few of the MHKs actually met with me. And I don't believe that that should you know, go forward in this particular process. I'm giving Tinwell the benefit of the doubt in this particular situation to listen to the people as, as well as their own uh, instincts and opinions. Right, now let's get to the reason why we're doing it on the 2nd <laughs> of August is yes. this, this gentleman, um, Mr. Brown. James Brown. James Brown, That's which everyone right. thinks of another James Brown. <laughs> but this is a fascinating piece of Manx history. It is. And I only came across it about a year ago and I couldn't believe that. It, it just summarize a little bit about it. Just tell us, uh, you know, of a little course. bit about it. So, so James Brown is considered one of the most uh, foremost uh, political reformers of, of Manx history. And the reason why is because he created an Isle of Man newspaper called the Isle of Man Times in the 1860s, uh, which he then used to challenge uh, the then self-appointed House of Keys. Uh, and back in those days, if you didn't have enough money to, to take care of yourself outside of government, it wasn't like the government would pay you the living wage. So what you ended up doing was you had to have your own money and then you self-appointed yourself into, into a position, i.e. the keys. And so he criticized them heavily. Now, he came from uh, Liverpool. He was the son of a Liverpudlian woman and uh, you know, grandson of an African-American slave. So when he came over here during that time, the Victorian era, you know, still at that time in history, the Americas were, were dealing with the Civil War. And uh, he was able to challenge and reform the political institutions here on the island. Uh, but the thing that makes him very interesting was the fact that uh, he called out the House of Keys um, in his newspaper. You know, he, he called them asses, essentially. Uh, he said that they were these extraordinary, uh, you know, Lee, uh, individuals that didn't actually represent the needs. He got of, in trouble, didn't he? For he massive trouble. Trou massive trouble. So he was then summoned uh, to the Keys and uh, sentenced to six months in prison uh, months. in Castle Rush. <laughs> wow. uh, because of these specific views and speaking out. And he really championed uh, the concept of, of, of a free press uh, and the, you know the pro-democratic element of people having a voice with inside of their of their daily politics. So you align with him? You feel connected to this guy? Yeah, I do. I feel connected to him on a, on a on a large variety of levels. Uh, not so much in the in the extent that I would you know go out into the paper and and criticize in the same way the keys. But I do believe that the government should be open to a certain critique, and I do believe it's requiring new voices, and it was it's requiring those people that have been uh, disenfranchised and left out to dry in society. Okay. Well. Eight Jim Soul is with us, <laughs> and there's more. We have a part two, and this is it's going places. Trust me, we've got lots more to talk about. Well, yeah, for the weekly process that I would like to do is you know to come out more and, and to speak about the entire process, opening this process out to the public, and letting me see how it works.